Welcome to The Spirit of Business, episode number 67, The Power of Yin Energy, with Matt Murphy and Sarah McCrum and special guest, David Lee. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Matt. Uh, we're going to do something a bit different today because I've invited Dave and Lee to join us. Um, I'm going to ask Davin to speak a little bit about who she is and what she does. Um, the reason I've invited her is because in Australia recently, and really everywhere, um, the topic has come up very strongly around men and women and the dynamic between them. There's been a whole great kind of hoo-ha in the Australian government around it. So it's been very much um, top of the news and top of mind here, but it's a perennial topic. And I think that it's really interesting in business to explore the, the masculine feminine dynamic. And Dave and Lee, the name of her work or her body of work is, is the power of the yin. So this feminine energy. So Dave and first of all, welcome to the spirit of business. And would you like to just tell us just a little bit about why this topic? Yes. Well, the power of the yin. So I work with sensitive, strong women who want to thrive and make a meaningful, meaningful impact in their lives. Um, and what I found is that for women to do this, they need to connect with a source of power and creativity that nourishes and supports them. Um, and the problem is that for most of us, uh, sensitive, strong women, we're trying to express our gifts within what I call a false young culture, not a true young, but a false young culture uh, that overemphasizes competition, linear thinking, action and immediate results. And this tends, this hurts those women. We become exhausted, sick, injured. Some even lose their mental health. It's very intense and depleting. So, my inspiration around the power of the yin is to support women to connect with their native energy, which is not the yang and it's certainly not the false yang, but to come from the yin, from the power of the yin. And in uh, Taoism, which is one of the sources of this yin yang philosophy and worldview, uh, the yin is considered the inexhaustible resource, the source from which all action arises and the place that we return to uh, when we are complete with our action, when the action has been fulfilled. So my personal work, I do group programs, one-on-ones with women and classes. Um, my work involves the body and energy, Qigong, sacred Taoist sexuality, uh, somatic journeying, yin yang wisdom. I'm also an integrative craniosacral therapist and a hypnotherapist. So I'm in the healing arts as well. So I think it would be really interesting, first of all, just to say a little bit more about yin and yang, because yeah. um, they're very familiar to me also, because I trained with Chinese masters. So I like everything in the Chinese system is defined in terms of yin and yang. They're, that's the fundamental polarity, positive and negative, so to speak. Um, can you say a little bit just what what you um, how you describe the qualities of yin energy and yang energy so that people can relate to them in terms of their own energy because we all have both types of energy in us to some extent. Yes, absolutely. So in the Taoist worldview, you know, we begin as the whole, and then the whole separates into the two great polarities: the yin and the yang. The active and the, the passive, the outward and the deep, the subterranean. So the yin is the internal. It is the uh, formless or the unformed. It is connected with eternal time. So it's outside of linear time. Um, it's also connected with the night and darkness. Um, it tends to be mysterious and it can be a confusing place to be. Um, and the yang is the action that's broad daylight that is high summer that's when the flower is in full bloom you know beautiful metaphor is you know the yin is what happens in the ground during the winter there's all this growth that we can't actually see the roots going down into that composted 
a place where death is being transformed into life. And then in the spring, we have the flat, which is the beginning of the yang season, the season of expression. The flower is coming up. It's about to be seen. It exposes itself in the sun, but it's very temporal. It can't stay open for very long. It completes its process. It returns to the earth. It becomes compost again. The process continues. So the yin is associated with the feminine. The yang is associated with the masculine. Um, what I find useful, especially thinking about anticipating this topic is that these are energies that we all have in each other, in ourselves and in each other, and that they are both, uh, they're both in a constant cyclical relationship with each other. And that this cycle is the creative life cycle. So certainly literally masculine, feminine come together. That's how babies are made. This is how, cre this is where creativity comes from. Um, does that? Yes, does that I mean, it's actually really fascinating. It's a beautiful description, first of all. Thank you. It puts me back in touch with all those years of Taoist um, education that seem a long way away for me. But um, if I, just listening to that in terms of business, um, it, it's so fascinating because what it just shows me so clearly is how still, even though I think we're aware of this, still it's so easy to look at the outward parts of business. And yet every business owner knows that all that work that happens beneath the ground, there is so much that happens in a business that nobody ever sees, for example. Um, and yet we have this cultural tendency, I think, to notice and to praise and to celebrate the outward rather than the inward. I'm really curious what you think about that, Matt, because it's quite intriguing, yeah, isn't it? It is. And um, I also think that that description and explanation was was quite beautiful as well and, and really um, gave me a, a sense of the picture, exactly what you're talking about there. And I really enjoyed listening to you when you're explaining uh, the difference between yin and yang and how that works. And I was then starting to think about this in terms of the topic and how that relates from a business perspective too, to say, well, how do those things come together? I know that you've been in business and, and um, I think you've successfully sold a business too. So you've obviously been through the life cycle of a business. And I'm always really um, intrigued as to the, the dynamic of the masculine and the feminine energy when it comes to business, because Sarah and I talk about these things historically. And, um, and you know, I, some of the things that I've been conscious of is that I'm probably not aware of my own energy, for example, in business. And, and Sarah will sometimes pick me up on that energy and, and I'll think, oh, okay, that's really interesting. So the more I, the more that I think we learn and understand this particular topic, I think it'd be uh, amazing for us all. Yes. I mean, if I can just comment on the, the when we're not aware of our own energy and how we're expressing yin and yang, I mean, that's actually the heart of my work mostly with women, sometimes with men, but is for us to understand those expressions in ourselves. And then we can actually bring them to bear to be to have a more powerful experience or more powerful uh, interaction. So there's times when, oh, this is a time when I need to be yin in relation to what's happening, or I need to bring in some yang energy or oh, the cycle that we're in in our business right now is not a yang cycle. As much as Christmas is coming and we wish we had something to show for it, we actually can't force this. We need to really drop into the yin before into this creative fomenting place in order for what we bring out to really be fully expressed, for example. That's so beautiful because you, it puts you in touch with the natural rhythm of life and to bring that natural rhythm into business, again, so much pressure, especially you know, marketing pressure in a way to be always performing and to be always on top and not to allow the seasonality of a business to be expressed. Although I do see, I do see people who lead um, groups of business owners, for example, or t they run you know, training programs. I, I see that coming through a bit more, this sense that there's a seasonality to business, more mature business people tends yeah. to tend to have that sense that you can't pump it all the time because you exhaust the yang then and you don't replenish 
the yin is what you're saying. And so actually the business ends up exhausted as well as the people. Absolutely. But I really like that concept that you're talking about there about flow. So understanding the flow of the business and then the interaction between when the yin and yang energy coming into the flow of the organization and when you should embrace each one of those flows. Um, and then knowing the time to flip, I think would be interesting to know when to go into the yang or when into going into the yin to, to actually match the flow of business. And it feels so much more spacious to me. Just talking about it mm -hmm. feels so good. It re I, I realize also in my own business that I've, there's, there's too much yang, you know, it's just too, too busy somehow. And I need to, I need to create more balance there. <laughs> Uh, I'm really, um, you know, when, when you started talking, Dave, and you were also talking about women and how women need to have that, the right source of energy within them in order to be able to perform well as themselves. Yes. And um, that also actually really touched me because I, I could feel how often a business environment doesn't necessarily support women to find that. And we know, because we hear all the time about successful women having to really operate in a very masculine, very yang kind of world, and they have to throw away that. But um, I think a lot of them, you know, it's very easy for them to burn out because they're not in touch with that, the, the natural source of energy for them. So it would be interesting to um, hear a bit more about how women, like how women can find that and how the men in business can recognize and create space for women to operate and the feminine energy in the business to operate in the way that it needs to. Yeah, yes. Um, oh, there's so much there. I mean, first of all, I wanna say that we're making vast generalizations when we say women and the yin, right? And men and the yang. Um, and the only way that I can define it is if a woman feels that her essence is truly yin, then that is the source of her power. And that is her source of connectedness and her resource. Um, so this won't apply to 100% of women, of course. Um, so um, again, I think the, the awareness and the, and the felt sense of what is the yin and what is the yang and where are we at in that cycle and what is needed here in this moment is so important. And then what is needed, uh, you know, for a woman to thrive in that, the way I describe it is there's a connection to intuition. There's a connection to the body. So if the body is overworked and exhausted and uncared for, um, a woman doesn't have the same level of access to her knowing and to her creative source. Um, there is the ability to, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I think you guys did a broadcast on people who are the big pink, big picture thinkers versus the detail oriented. And it actually reminded me of this kind of uh, polarity, you know, where we have to recognize that both are needed in the business and how to actually maximize uh, that to feed the creative life of the business, to grow the business and for it to be a healthy, uh, well-sourced you know, business. And so the other thing is understanding that certain kinds of structures, um, like even this is, these are the hours that we work, you must show up here, you, know, you must work under these conditions these are not necessarily yin conditions. And, you know, a symbol of that is women who are working in their childbearing years and they want to be able, you know, they, they have their own cycle. They have their own cycle of being internal and their own cycle of producing and being outward. And so to be able to let go of certain kinds of structures to allow for more fluidity, to allow for um, a little... And to become more comfortable in a formless place, knowing that it's in the process, it's a gestation. It's a gestational process that will then come into form. If you force form on something too quickly, um, it's not fully formed. It's not going to be strong. Um, I'm not sure if that's answering the question or if I'm getting a little bit. Well, but it's, for me, it's really helpful. There are some experiences that I 
have had, and I often think about this in relation to this topic. So one of the experiences that probably almost all women have at times um, is that you're in a conversation, in a business conversation, and you say something or um, you, you, you have whatever opinions or something, and they're not, it's like they're not noticeable. They're mm. not seen. They don't, it's a really weird experience because I'm, I'm fairly yang in the, my outward expression. Um, and yet to have that experience and to realize that, I've realized at times that was simply because I was actually coming at it with a different way of speaking. So that's one thing that, that I've noticed. It's a strange experience to sort of not exist. Mm. Um, but, but I think what's been much more important for me is to recognize the power of that yin of the feminine energy. Because although I'm quite a yang person, I realize that my power lies in when I'm more yin. And, and actually, the more masculine I get, yeah. I think mm. the less powerful I get. And a few people have really pulled me up on that at times and said, you know, you need to realize what your power really is. And it's not about being a woman or a man. It's about the fact that there's this kind of deep well of love and expansive energy that I can touch into, or I can go into my head and be more, you know, just talk a different language. The thing is that that, what I found is that yin energy, as you described it, is quieter on the whole and it is more formless so it doesn't translate into snappy sentences and instant actions which is the whole point of it and so the thing that i feel is really important is that people for whom yin energy that feminine energy is important that we understand the power of it that it doesn't always need to be spoken and we don't always need to be the star of the show and we don't always need to be the one who concludes the session with the action points let the yang energy do that but know inside yourself the power of that feminine energy um, and that takes courage because it takes the courage to not be seen so much sometimes but to know that what you're doing is extraordinarily valuable as is what the yang energy the masculine energy is doing it it doesn't diminish the other energy it, it empowers it but i think sometimes we're looking to have um as women we're looking to have the yin energy become yang it's like we want the feminine energy to be almost like masculine in its expression and that's not going to work so i think we have to know ourselves that's what i'm really saying we need to know who we are from the inside and really stand for that in a powerful way rather than expect everybody else to recognize it i think that's where the real power lies that makes a huge amount of sense from my point of view um and what you said before david about it's not isolated to just because you're a man or a woman that you got masculine or feminine energy and 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 my earlier comment about sort of and your comment around awareness of what you are and what you also outwardly project as well is a, is a really interesting um, concept and, and thought process because I might be thinking that I'm, I'm being very yin but outwardly projecting yang and so therefore there's this ultimate confusion that goes on in, in my mind as to think, but I'm thinking on one thing and another thing and I can see this play out so many times in so many situations in board meetings in um, you know team Sarah. meetings in with Sarah <laughs> and 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 so it, it's really interesting to me and, and I kind of like what you spoke about before going back to big picture and then detail people and how this all all plays out and um I can kind of really tap into this yin energy that I feel and I think that that's probably the essence of who I am as an individual However, I live in a yang world. And so therefore, I probably had to adapt to the yang similarly to what you're talking about there in terms of what women have typically had to do in business as well. Yes. So the other part of this is that it's damaging for men that we haven't honored the yin because it's also exhausting for men. It also means you know, families fall apart because men don't know how to, you know, be in the family and be out in the, you know, they're exhausted from working out in the world. They can't keep all the balls in the air all the time. And so 
you know, what I would love to see is an understanding and an honoring of that full spectrum of our humanity of the yin and the yang so that the yin person in the in the meeting is not getting trampled on by the yang people nor are they expected to keep up with the yang you know there's a i know for myself as a strong woman that if i'm around uh, a strong man or a man that i want to impress for whatever reason it I feel like I actually need to be competitive. Like I need to show them what I can do. And that's me going, trying to go head to head, yang to yang. And they no, you know, the yang doesn't need more yang. The yang needs to be harmonized by the yin. Otherwise there's no polarity and there's no life. There's no creativity. So, um, you know, there's a great, um, there's a great analogy, a sun and moon analogy I was thinking of, and this is a really interesting way to look at yin and yang dynamics in business. So if the yang is the sun, which is expressing and shining, you know, and it's glowing and it can't really see what's behind it. It only sees what's in front. What is reflecting back the sun's light is the moon. So she, there she is, she's not active, she's seeing, she sees the sun, but she also sees everything else that's around the sun. Uh, she sees the deep shadow that is outside of the sunlight. And if the sun doesn't have the moon there to reflect back, the sun has no sense of itself. It just shines into the darkness. It never meets anything. The moon is there to reflect back. And in a little bit of a twist, the moon, when the moon shifts from the reflecting into a yang expression, her I'll use the gender, her yang expression is to give a reflection back to the sun to say, I love this idea and I'm seeing this and this and this and you're leaving out this or this is great, keep going. Um, and then the sun receives that feedback. This is in the healthy expression of the yin and yang. The sun receives that information and you know adapts changes grows transforms and then shines again hopefully in an even better way now the extremes of those are if the moon never is never heard for the reflection um doesn't have a voice is ignored then the moon feels more and more disempowered and then there may be a resentment that builds or an anger or a passive aggressive way to try to give feedback um, and then that become, and then the sun, if the sun has an experience of that reflection being highly critical and cutting, then the sun doesn't feel safe to ask for feedback also. So then we get into a sun that's not strong enough to say, I want your feedback. I'm going to grow from that. And you have two roles that are unfulfilled. Um, another aspect, another unhealthy aspect of the reflective is um, just being a yes person, just saying everything you do is wonderful. And then there's sort of a codependent kind of thing. And the sun becomes a tyrant. The sun takes so much power and no reflection back. So I feel like those are interesting. Uh, that's an interesting analogy to bring into a business setting too. Are we just putting out information and not getting the feedback? Are we receiving the feedback? Are we um, does the yin have a chance to reflect back? And the other thing I want to say about these energies is that, you know, ideally we have this lovely harmony where they, they feed into one another like healthy seasons. They feed into one another offering this healthy feedback, healthy expression, and it continues. Um, but both of them can become excessive or deficient. These are words from Chinese medicine. You know, so... If, if the yin is excessive, it's depressed, it's sunk, sunken, it can't, it doesn't know how to go from the, from the uh, fomenting and, the, and the, the formless into form. And it needs a yang inspiration or a yang moment to say, no, we need to act now. You know, that's kind of the, the part in the creative process where you're like enough planning, enough dreaming, we just need to do it or enough editing. It just needs to be published as it is. Put it out there. Keep the cycle moving. Um, 
And so anyway, both energies have those qualities. And so that's another, you know, then you get into the next subtle layer of sensitivity to yourself and where you are and the sensitive sensitivity to the other. And what I love about in Chinese medicine, I mean, it's, this is the medicine. Do you need the medicine of the yang in this moment? Or do you need the medicine of the yin in this moment? So what are the techniques that you've seen and you've seen apply in business where this works really, really well and where it doesn't work so well either in, in contrast? Well, it's funny because, you know, the business I was in, I did have a few employees, but it was mostly myself. So I don't have like a corporate experience. I just have to say full out. Um, you know, but I think feeling into when when something's being forced and it's not, it doesn't feel full, it doesn't feel healthy. Uh, feeling into, is there exhaustion, which is resulting in really lack of creativity? Oh, we need some more yin here. Or is, you know, are we in a pattern where, okay, we've taken this retreat and people have had vacations and they don't have to be in at a certain time, but we need to get some things done on deadline. And now it's time to bring people to task. Um, so I don't know. I mean, what are some thoughts that you have or particular situations that and might what, be? What occurs to me is that actually it, it's not so much about techniques. That's a very young question, Matt. What are the techniques? <laughs> um, <laughs> the the answer to this, which is a good answer to the good question, talk, is. Huh? is that a, a deeper understanding of this seasonal cyclical um, and f the, the flow of energy that like energy can only move because you have yin and yang, you have up and down. If you don't have up and down, you don't have movement, everything's static. So it only moves because of this, this polarity. And I really, I, I understand now why my first Chinese master, he used to talk, he would sit, we would all sit cross-legged and he would talk for one or two or three hours in this continuous flow of just talking about energy and yin and yang and all these different topics, Chinese topics. But the point was that when you appreciate the underlying, it's not really philosophy, but the, the underlying um, nature of life, you know how to apply that. The problem that we have in, in most businesses is that not a lot of time is taken to appreciate and really understand that underlying nature and to recognize that the underlying nature of life is also the underlying nature of business because business is an expression of that same life. So for me, it's more about us, especially as leaders and business owners, listening to what Davin says and reflecting on our own business and saying, hold on a moment, this has got really out of balance. So the minute you recognize it, you start to move towards a more balanced situation. It's almost like you can't help it. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. You might forget, but if you see it again, you know immediately. Hmm. I have to say, I mean, I have to bring in the earth here too you know, because business has impacted the earth in asking the earth to constantly produce and produce and produce and produce and produce, or to take everything that it's produced until there isn't enough, until it's depleted. And just that kind of understanding of, <clears throat> you know, this is one, this is a way in which what I'm calling the false yang has, has has related to nature instead of allowing nature to really instead of really um, uh, uh, connecting with and harmonizing with what nature is showing us about cycles. And I know Sarah, you've talked about how the garden always produces more than you need. Like it's there's always more. But if you but if you insist that it be only in its yang and never get to move into its yin then you will end up with barren land. Well, that's what we have, interestingly. So the, the farm that, that I live on had been overproduced. It had been overstressed with being overgrazed um, for some time. And so it's a really weird thing because I can see the abundance. I can see that a papaya produces 
thousands of seeds, a single papaya, and every single one of those can turn into a tree. And some of our, we put some compost in our soil, and we've got all these little papaya trees growing up because we threw away some papaya seeds. And at the same time, because the soil is exhausted, it's really hard to grow anything in it. So there's this odd thing happening, and it's a perfect example which you could apply to business, where where the system has got exhausted by the false yang and an excess of yang. The yin isn't there, that's why I've given the farm a whole year to begin with to relax and probably will need to give it more and just not really do anything except really the fundamental supporting things. But people say it, it takes time, really takes time to build soil fertility, but it's out of that fertility that the true abundance comes. So we don't have an abundance of food at the moment because a lot of things don't grow, but the, abun the potential of abundance is totally there and is being expressed through mostly non-food things um, like mice and kangaroos and all sorts of stuff that's enjoying it a lot at the moment. <laughs> so it's well, kind of fascinating in terms of business as well, I think, because business is all about abundance in the end. Mm -hmm. And nature is all about abundance, but when it gets out of balance, oh my goodness, is it not? I right. can't help think about the word expectation when it comes when it's driving that sort of or forcefulness. So um, there's an expectation that you continually produce and produce and produce, as you say before. And I think that creates the tension and then an unrealistic expectation that things are going to continue to grow. It, you know, there's this expectation from shareholders or from stakeholders in a business that um, expect it to continually grow by 10 percent every year as a as a number. And at some point in time, that just becomes, you know, it, it breaks. You, you can't do that anymore. And that's, I think, where the tension lies and why the yang becomes pretty forceful and why it pushes it into uh, this place where um, it's out of balance because it's very focused on an expectation that that is creating an environment that's probably not conducive to what we're talking about there. I have such a funny thought going in my mind. Can you imagine if all those... Um, male business owners, and I know there are many, many women business owners, but just for the sake of this moment, every single one of those was expected to produce a baby every year. So their wife or partner has to produce a baby every year, year after year after year after year. Like, just think about that for a moment. It's such a funny picture, but I think it tells us something. Well, it's actually a really good metaphor, Sarah, because men have how many thousands, hundreds of thousands of sperm that they, that they can seed. Whereas a woman, it takes nine months to grow a baby. And then, you know, she has to be healthy enough to get pregnant. Then she's feeding that baby. If she's nursing, this is a much longer, slower process. So there is a drive. There is a natural in nature. The masculine drive is to produce and produce and produce. Whereas the feminine drive is to, to grow and to be in that darkness. You can't see the baby growing. People didn't know there were babies in there. You know, whatever the mythology used to be, you know, we didn't know how it happened. Um, and uh, so these are two very different energies that have to negotiate with each other, interestingly, you yes. know. Um, and those that, are- That's such a good word, that negotiate with each other. Yes. Because they, actually, they both need to create space for each other. And they both need to recognize that when they're well expressed or fully expressed, there's a very powerful creativity that emerges from that. And I will say from my own experience that the creativity you can have with another person is there's something that happens in a dynamic with two people that it, it's not. It's, it's way more than the creativity of one person. I've, I've had the experience of creating things on my own a lot. When I started creating with another person, it's like a transcendent experience. Mm -hmm. And so the recognition of needing these these two energies and how they work with each other, and how how they can become both out of balance and also in relatively more balance with each other we, you know we isn't balance isn't really a place we stay but we pass through and we can we can aim to be moving towards it rather than away from it that seems to me to be where the power lies and recognizing really contemplating that in relation to the business both the whole business and also the people in the business i just feel that that's very rich territory 
Yeah, I also want to add that this is rel yin and yang are relative to each other. <clears throat> so we've mostly been talking about, you know, fairly polarized expressions of yin and yang. But, you know, Matt, when you were talking about you feel yin on the inside, but maybe you're coming across as yang, you know, you're only as yin as the yin person on one side and the yang person on the other side, you know. And so this is another way where, you know, if somebody's listening to this and this is a new concept, we're, we, you need to learn how to become sensitive to the subtleties of yin and yang. So you're not just looking for, oh, the quiet person is always the yin, you know, or, or um, you know, whatever it is, like it can become caricatured really quickly. Yes. Yeah. You know, in a moment, there can be, you know, Sarah and I, we're being relatively young. Matt, you're being a lot quieter. You know, we're holding forth about the yin. Our, <laughs> We've our, been our given our moments. The authorities, <laughs> and you're taking a backseat listening. We're in the young right at the moment, you know. Um, but just even subtle moments of if, if somebody is being receptive and receiving or offering, oh, let's not forget this part, you know, that's a yin moment. Um, so those are other things to keep in mind, you know, playing with this. And there was something I wanted to go back to about the depleted soil, that when the yin becomes depleted, because the yin is the source of life and that which life returns to. So it's really, I mean, you could probably argue on and on, but that's this is the this is the field within which the yang exists when it becomes depleted everything suffers and it is a very long process to rebuild that depletion so we talk about it as an inexhaustible resource which it is but the more you deplete an inexhaustible resource the longer it it's going to take back take to fill back up again so this is something that we all, and again, to connect it to the planet, you know, what's happening to the planet is a reflection of how each and every one of us are, are relating in ourselves, are taking care of our own personal planet, our personal earth, our bodies, our, our psyches, our creative life force energy. So, um, you know, we have this mirror from nature of the cycles and of what happens when you don't follow them and we can align ourselves with that we can that can be our teacher on a regular basis we just open our eyes to that and also feel into our own feel into ourselves so in a way Matt, I'm sort of answering that question of what are the steps or what's the procedure you know it really is a sensitivity to self and then a real seeing of asking nature to show us how these energies work and how they work in health and what makes them sick <clears throat> Thank you. I think that's a really beautiful place to end. You've given us a technique. You've, <laughs> in and you've given us a technique that makes us more reflective. So you've satisfied the yin and the yang needs here, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's practical as well. And I, I, I know for me that simply listening to a conversation like this opens me to to see things more clearly in my own life and my own business. I'm sure that's the case. I, I can see Matt, I, I can see conversations that are going to emerge out of this between us. <laughs> so I look forward to Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Um, I'd just like you to, can you just tell people, Dave, and if they want to learn more about your work, where can they find you? Yes. Thank you. I have a website. It's under my name, davenlee.com, D-A-V-E-N-L-E-E.com. You can also find me at thepowerofthe.yin.com. Thank you. And I do, much. you know, I do remote work with people all over the world, as well as here in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Wonderful. Well, it's really been a pleasure. I'm so glad you came. It's such an interesting conversation. It's taken me back to some of the, the roots of my education, actually, really, which was that Taoist Chinese kind of energy um, conversation. I love it. I really love it. I'm very grateful that you came and shared that mm. with us. Oh, thank and I'm you. grateful as well too because uh, for other reasons, it really does help to explain things uh, and what goes on and why things occur, and that helps me understand how to 
manage situations better or, or to be sensitive towards certain things that I may not necessarily be apparent. And I think that's really good. And it actually helps to create that awareness. So as you say, the space, which means that I know, you know, to, to look beyond the obvious or look beyond what you're actually seeing to then work out what else is at play here, mm. which I think is, is going to assist with, once again, helping, uh, helping all people flourish um, in business and also in the world. So thank you. That's pretty good. <laughs> and it's just started pouring with rain here which we need on our farm that's beautiful <laughs> it's very noisy so <laughs> I, I need great. to myself but so thank you thank you both and um yes lots of food for thought thank you thank you for listening to the spirit of business with matt murphy and sarah mccrum We'll be back next week with another episode. You'll find the show notes with links and other useful information on our website, spiritofbusiness.live. And if you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your friends.